Hey everybody, welcome to week eight of our Victory Garden segments. Uh, here we are at our beautiful Victory Garden. We're going to take a look at some of the plants, uh, talk a little bit about maybe some amendments or some things to keep your soil really healthy, um, talk a little bit about trellising and flowers. So we're going to take a look at how our plants are growing this week and uh, we've got a few flowers on some of our zucchinis. So these plants are doing well, they're well established, and uh, they are making flowers, and if flowers get pollinated, then we're gonna have zucchini soon. Um, we've also got our kale and some of our other uh, brassicas are noticeably healthier looking. So um, by now you should see a lot of your plants are going to be um, putting on new leaves. They're going to be just getting bigger and stronger looking. Our tomatoes are getting really nice and green. They're putting on a lot of new growth and we do have a few flowers here and there. So pretty much, um, you know, everything's starting to get established and now might be a good time to uh, start thinking about a few soil additives or something to just keep the soil healthy and keep your plants healthy all season long. So now we're just going to take a look at um, uh, some of our plants that are struggling just a little bit. Um, these cucumbers, they're putting on some new, some good new growth, but um, I would say they're not thriving. And so mostly just because they're still a little bit spindly and they, they haven't grown a whole lot. Um, now is a really good time to think about whether or not maybe you do need to add a little bit something to your garden, um, as Sal was mentioning. So we're just going to take a look at a few things that you could potentially do to help boost your plants um, this time of year. Uh, they've been in the ground a few weeks now and it's a good time to start thinking about that. One of the things that I really like to use and um, that I'd probably use on here is a is a um, it's a fish and kelp fertilizer and this is an organic um, fertilizer that's made out of fish and kelp and it's um, I'm gonna just point out here last week we talked about NPK so that was nitrogen phosphorus potassium and fertilizers always have those three numbers in that order so this one says two five one meaning um, that's the ratio of nitrogen phosphorus and potassium. Um, just something to keep in mind when you're looking at your soil tests and um, what kind of things you're adding to your to your plants or your soil. But anyway this is a really nice um, just kind of general thing that you can use to just boost your plants. You just mix it with water and, and uh, water it in. So uh, another thing that some people might be more familiar with is just buying a pre-made pre-mixed uh, fertilizer and adding that. And because we garden in a, you know, like organic fashion, we try to work with the soil, work with, you know, what the plants need. Um, there are some organic certified fertilizers on the market. So this is one that is pretty, a pretty common brand. And, you know, again, it's got the NPK, the numbers on the front, really plain to see. And this is, you know, a good, just general fertilizer that's gonna be fine for, you know, pretty much all purposes. Um, however, I do want to look at like the ingredients of this. So this is made from organic, essentially turkey, turkey litter, and then a little bit of other add-ins. So really this is just composted manure, and um, that's why we also advocate for, you know, making your own compost or trying to make your own, um, get your own sources of organic matter to get into your garden. Because, I mean, you can go out and pay for this, but if you want to and you have, you know, a lot of vegetable scraps or you do have access to some horse manure or chicken litter or something like that, um, just, you know, putting that in a pile in your yard somewhere and just letting it break down and just get really nice, um, you're making your own fertilizer. And you can do that pretty, um, pretty inexpensively and with not very much time investment. Yeah, and Sal, thanks for mentioning that about the compost because um, another option with these cucumbers would be to literally just mulch around the cucumbers with some compost and that way um, you'd be working um, compost into the soil and also every time they were watered you'd be um, giving them a little boost. So um, as Sal said, adding compost to the soil is always great. Uh, something else that I like to do, which is a fun hobby as well as providing benefits to the garden, is I like to um, raise vermicomposting worms. Um, so you may have, you 
may have heard of this before, maybe not, but um, just having some composting worms in just like a small bin in your house is something that is really another low investment way to start generating some good um, compost or just some good like nutrients for plants. So in here I've got, um, this is, well this is essentially like their digested, you know, um, casings that they're outputting. So these casings are something that's really easy to just incorporate into the soil. They're going to add a little bit of a boost and not uh, burn your plants. Otherwise, I recently made some where I just um, took some of the casings out and I um, just steeped them in like a five gallon bucket of water. And now this is going to be a really awesome diluted like fertilizer that I can go and just apply um, you know, ground level to the plants or um, some people even apply it as like a foliar spray um, to get on the leaves to really get that nutrition into the plants fast. And I will show you what the worms look like um, if I can find them. So this variety is called Red Wrigglers and they really don't like the light so they're all kind of hiding in here. But here you can see um, we've got them at some different ages. Um, so we've got some little ones and some bigger ones. So that's kind of how I know that my worm bin is healthy, is that I've got a lot of different age sizes of worms. And you can see them wriggling around like their name says. And um, I just feed these maybe once every week to three weeks if I'm, you know, forget about them for a little bit. And just throw them a bunch of kitchen scraps and then some just like newspaper or some uh, paper, you know, just like paper bags or packing paper and they feed off of that and in turn they produce some nice compost for me. So I picked up a few tomato cages at the hardware store. Um, I have to say I had kind of forgotten how small tomato cages are and I think that we're probably going to be a little bit sad about the size of these but um, we're going to try them out and probably you know you just um, put the cage around the plant and step it into the ground um, but once you've done that, it's really hard to get the weeds out, and so we're, um, we're going to talk a little bit about mulching. Um, mulching your tomatoes can be a really good idea it, for several reasons. Uh, one is because, like I said, the cultivation is going to be difficult once you have a tomato cage. Uh, another reason is that the mulch will keep soil moisture in. It'll also, um, there's some soil-borne diseases that tomatoes can get, and so the mulch will help um, to keep to keep diseases from infecting your tomato plant. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to get some mulch for these plants and then we're going to mulch them and put the tomato cages on after we put the mulch down. One more thing I just want to mention about the mulch is that if you are going to use mulch, um, especially if you're going to use something like hay or straw, you want to make sure that it's really thick. Um, a thin mulch will let weeds come through it and then you've got the problem where you can't use a hoe but you've also got weeds so if you're going to go with a, um, a natural mulch like that you really are going to want to put it down nice and thick. Okay so another thing that you might want to add to your garden or something else to consider is maybe some beautiful flowers. Uh, so we've really been focused a lot on the vegetables and you know getting some vegetables and some herbs going. Um, but flowers can also be a really essential part of a garden. So flowers are going to, if you get uh, the right kind of flowers, they're going to be very attractive to pollinators. And they're also going to provide um, pollen or nectar to keep these pollinators, um, like bees and butterflies, moths. Um, there's a lot of different pollinator insects out there. Um, so insects don't necessarily need to be bad in your garden. A lot of them can do um, really good stuff. So getting some flowers in, if you've got a little extra space, can be great for just encouraging um, these beneficial insects to come to your garden. And having the flowers um, also means that they will travel around and maybe visit some of your vegetables, and they're gonna help increase the likelihood that your um, flowers are getting pollinated and you're gonna get good fruit. Yeah, and you know, um, I, I think that part of having flowers in your garden too is just the beauty. Um, I think that sometimes we forget how important um, having beautiful things in our lives are and um, flowers just bring a lot of joy and so I think that's that's a really important piece of it too. Yeah.
That's yes. a good yeah. enough reason to have flowers. Yeah. Just the beauty. Just the beauty. Yeah, and so we've got um, we've got some sunflowers we're gonna put in. We've got some tithonia, which is also called Mexican sunflower. Um, those are particularly attractive to the butterflies. And what do you have there? Uh, I have some ageritum. Um, just uh, a few leftovers that didn't fit in and they're uh, starting to flower so they're definitely indicating to me that they're ready to get planted. Now we're going to take a look at some of your victory gardens. We've got some different approaches this week to take a look at. These first pictures are from Mike and Laurel McMullen of some raised beds that they made. The next couple photos are from Carrie Grandal, and as you can see, um, she went ahead and dug up her lawn. Uh, she added lettuce, chard, and spinach, and she got a really cool Victory Garden sign. These last pictures are from Casey McGee. She used a combination of um, a bed alongside her deck and some pots and um, got creative with her space and she also shared with us a picture of um, her dog Bruce helping out with the squash transplanting. We would encourage you to join the Amory Victory Gardens Facebook page and post your photos as well. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for joining us and um, next week we'll go ahead and put up that other tomato trellis um, and we'll take a look around the garden, see what else, um, see what else is going on. And as always, don't forget to leave comments and we will um, try and get you answers to any questions that you have. Anything else? Have a great week and see you next week.